Last time we were at Homestead near Miami, where Klaus Ludwig and Ricardo Zonta vanquished their Mercedes teammates Bert Schneider and Mark Webber to go four points clear in the Drivers' Championship with just one round to go. And so the battle for the title is just between these two pairings. The best Porsche drivers, Scotsman Alan McNish and Yannick Dalmas of France, are next up, but they're too far behind to catch them. This final round is on the dramatic Laguna Seca road circuit on the Pacific coast in Northern California. The 27 car field is just going out on its warm-up lap and it's the Ludwig Zonta Mercedes that's taken pole position by two-fifths of a second from the Schneider Weber car. Alan McNish has put the works Porsche on row two alongside the mighty Penos with David Brabham at the wheel. Then it's the second works Porsche of Muller and Altson and the leading V12 Mercedes of Maylander and Bouchou. And in G the Claudia Hertgen Porsche 911 is fastest. They're coming round now to complete the rolling lap. The pace car is in the pit lane. The race is on. The two Mercedes move. And it's Ludwig. Ludwig ahead of Schneider. The two Mercedes leading the field with slotting into third place. Alan McNish. Schneider having a little look at the inside as they go through that first left-hander. But it is Ludwig who leads. It's Schneider in second place. Alan McNish well up there and pushing hard in third place. The Penos is also well up. The race is on. And with the two Mercedes at the front, it means the Drivers' Championship battle is running at the front of this race. McNish pushing hard in third place. That's the Hugh Chamberlain Viper off very early on. The Dutchman John Hugenholtz has put that in the gravel. Meanwhile, this is the spectacular downhill S-Bend. They call the corkscrew. The two Mercedes going through ahead of the Porsche, then the Paynos, and the Mustang off. That's the green Mustang of Daniel Draw, which has also gone into the gravel, but meanwhile we're riding with Bernd Schneider, last year's champion, battling to be this year's champion. Ahead of him, the man who can beat him, Klaus Ludwig. Ludwig, 49 years old, about to retire. This is his last race, and he wants to get this championship. The battle going on inside the Mercedes team. There's a Marcos in the pits, that's the Hermann Berman car, but look at McNish! McNish right on Schneider's tail now. McNish in third place, Schneider in second. We're riding with McNish now. McNish in the right hand drive Porsche, the Mercedes a left-hand drive, looking through that letterbox windscreen, McNish working away. Meanwhile, in GT2, we've got a great battle for the lead. Marcos leading, Porsche second, Viper third, and look at the Viper going through on the inside. That's Olivier Beretta taking second place in GT2 from Claudia Hertgen as they pursue the Marcos that's leading GT2. Hertgen fighting back, weaving from one side to the other, but Olivier Beretta, who's already won the GT2 championship for Viper, is holding her off. And McNish has gone second. The number seven Porsche has passed the number one Mercedes. McNish is second and indeed moving away Mercedes one Porsche two Mercedes three and with McNish taking second place we're seeing a replay he managed to get inside Schneider on the, that long double right hander and there was nothing Schneider could do about it McNish goes second and that's bad news for Schneider we're seeing now the GT2 battle once more and the lead is going to change the Beretta Viper going inside Coroyza's Marcos, that brightly coloured Marcos. It seems that neither Beretta nor Viper can do any wrong in GT2 this year. They've already won the GT2 championship, and that's the third place GT2 car in the pits. Claudia Hertgen, the very rapid German girl driver. Oh, and a spin for one of the V12 Mercedes. One of the blue person Mercedes has spun. It's it's Jean-Marc Gounon. Jean-Marc Gounon almost taking off one of the little 911 GT2 Porsches, but he's back on the circuit. And meanwhile, Alan McNish is doing a magnificent job. Norbert Howe doesn't look happy to know that a Porsche is splitting his two silver Mercedes. There is our leading car, and there is McNish. He's not far behind. McNish is actually closing on the leader, Klaus Ludwig. There's Ludwig with the red mirrors. There is the Alan McNish, and you can see that their lap times are not far apart. The fastest lap, in fact, so far to McNish. McNish working magnificently on this swooping, diving, ducking road circuit. Now, this is the battle for fourth place in the GT2 class between two of the 911 Porsches. We're travelling with Michel Neugarten, the Swiss, and going round on the outside of him, William Langhorn, the American, using all his local knowledge of Laguna Seca, but he hasn't got past yet. Neugarten holds him off. 
Langhorne looking one side than the other as they go downhill, then steeply uphill. Two identical Porsches, an experienced sports car driver in one, a man with local knowledge in the other, he's going through on the inside. Langhorne goes through as they go into the corkscrew, and Neugarten trying to fight back as they go downhill once more. Langhorne on the outside, Neugarten on the inside, Neugarten goes ahead again. Now, while they're having this battle behind them, the leaders are approaching. Klaus Ludwig, still the leader, coming up close behind. Alan McNish chasing him. Ludwig's lining up to go through. There's nowhere for him to go. They've touched. And Langhorn, that was, who touched, in fact, hit quite hard the side of Ludwig's car. But it doesn't seem to have slowed Ludwig at all. There's our GT2 leader, that's Beretta, leading Porsche and Marcos and Porsche. But that was a very nasty moment. We're seeing now Langhorn go off in a replay at the top of the corkscrew, so he didn't last very long, hits the tyre barriers quite hard, and his race must be run. Cor Euser in the pits with the Marcos smoking badly, and his race too, sadly, is over. So Ludwig survived that worrying moment with a back marker. McNish still in second place, but Schneider very close to him now. Suddenly, McNish seems to have lost a bit of pace. Schneider seems to have found somewhere riding with McNish now. More back markers to worry about. He goes past that 911. In his mirrors is Schneider looming one side, then the other. Now the short straight, and Schneider is poised to pounce. Schneider tucked in the slipstream. Now we ride with Schneider, and Schneider looking at the inside as they go into that tight left-hander. Down the gearbox goes Schneider, working away at the wheel, but McNish slams the door in his face. Then they accelerate away once more. Porsche in second place, Mercedes in third place, and of course what Schneider is worried about is that in the lead is the man that he needs to beat for championship points to get the championship title. Mercedes 1, Porsche 2, Mercedes 3, Paynos 4. There is the distinctive front engine Paynos grumbling on its V8 way with David Brabham at the wheel and still Schneider waiting for his opportunity. Schneider perhaps having lost just a little bit of space in that last lap. But Nish easing away from him slightly. We're looking at the two V12 Mercedes fighting over seventh place. Which one's going ahead? White mirrors leads blue mirrors. That means Jean-Marc Gounon has gone ahead of Bernd Maylander. They're battling over seventh place. They're out of the running at the front. The earlier, bigger, heavier V12 Mercedes. The two silver cars that are leading are the newer, more light V8s. That's our GT2 leader, Olivier Beretta, still in the Viper. Only one of the semi-works French-run Vipers here in this race, but it's running very comfortably at the front. Beretta working his way down the corkscrew. We've got the first of the routine stops. That's Bert Maylander in in the V12 Mercedes. He's being refueled. No change of driver by the look of things. They're ready to change the tyres, but I don't think they're going to. They don't. Maylander rejoins. Oh, and that's McNish. McNish is off the road. Alan McNish from second place has gone off, and you see the telltale uh, rubber streaks down the road. He swapped ends under braking. He's still stuck in the car. McNish off. We've got Bert Schneider in the pits for his routine stop as they wheel away McNish's car. Schneider goes out of the pits. A very quick stop for Schneider. He stayed in the car. He didn't change tyres, but now this is Ludwig, and Ludwig does get out, and Ricardo Zonta does get in, and are they going to change tyres? They do. Now, that's most interesting because Schneider changed neither driver nor tyres, but Ludwig has changed both. Ricardo Zonta in that car waiting to go off. They're still changing the tyres. You're only allowed to use one mechanic each side for those tyre changes, very unlike Formula One. It's a long and it's a slow stop, and Zonta stalled it. Zonta has stalled it further to increase the length of time that car spent in the pits, and now Zonta gets out, finally fishtailing down the pit lane as Beretta comes in, presumably to change over to Pedro Lamy. Yes, Pedro Lamy's bright crash helmet waiting there. In comes the second works Porsche, Uwe Altsen at the wheel, the door open, and Altsen's getting out. Uwe Altsen out with Jörg Muller sliding in to take over as they clean the screen, and they're waiting to change tyres if that's needed. I suspect with a driver change they probably will change tyres. But interesting that there are lots of different strategies for this race, and particularly different strategies between the two Mercedes, the two cars whose drivers are battling for the Drivers' Championship. The Paynos is in. Eric Bernard now on board. David Bramham taking a rest. Eric Bernard comes out of the pits in the front engine Paynos. And Bert Schneider comfortably in the league now. We see Ricardo.
Carlo Zonta settling into that number two car. And we've had a spin going into the corkscrew. It's one of the V12 Mercedes reversing its way back onto the circuit. It's Bert Maylander. Bert Maylander has spun going into the corkscrew, but restarts. Meanwhile, we have confirmation that Alan McNish is out with what we're told was gearbox problem. It was a gearbox problem that sent him off the road after that tremendous drive, which allowed him to split the two Mercedes. But now we're back with the championship battle at the front. It is Mercedes one and two. Bern Schneider is leading. Ricardo Zonta is in second place. The battle goes on. Welcome back to Laguna Seca. The battle for the FIA GT Drivers' Championship goes on with Bernd Schneider still leading the race, but Ricardo Zonta in the number two Mercedes chasing him hard with Mercedes one and two. This is the battle for fifth place, the blue V12 Mercedes of Marcel Thiemann holding off the green Porsche with the red stripes over the back. That's the Zack Speed car of Max Angelelli, and Angelelli sixth, Thiemann fifth, battle also for third place ahead of them which is the Paynos. there it is of Eric Bernard now he's taken over that car from David Brabham and on his tail Jörg Muller in the number eight Porsche the only works Porsche left in the race and off goes the Paynos. the Paynos running wide there and that has allowed Muller to go by into third place Eric Bernard pushed down into fourth place in the Paynos, and Alan McNish in the other works Porsche out with gearbox problems early on, having run in a magnificent second place. We're watching the GT2 Porsche of Michel Ligonnet, which has got that left-hander completely wrong. The fifth place battle goes through, fortunately, while the Porsche manages to move out of the way. We see a replay, a complete 180 degree spin, a cloud of rubber smoke, but Ligonnet brings it to a halt safely, and here this battle now for fifth place. Angelelli sells team and a dummy on the right, then dives past on the left and squeezes through to take that fourth place. The Mercedes pushed back to fifth place, and at once Angelelli is able to ease away in the green Zaxfeed Porsche. Meanwhile, Bernd Schneider, our leader, is on the tail of Jörg Muller's Porsche, which is in third place. He's trying to lap it, and Schneider has been stuck behind that number eight Porsche for several laps now, and Schneider can't find a way by. Schneider's pace has been reduced because he's stuck behind the Porsche, can't get past it, and what that means is that Zonta is getting closer. A pit stop for Maylander. Bouchou is back in that car. They've changed the tyres, and Christophe Bouchou takes it down the pit lane in a cloud of rubber smoke and back onto the circuit. This is a replay of Schneider from the cockpit. He's very, very angry with York Muller ahead of him as he passes the pits, making gesticulations to try and get the Porsche pit to talk to Muller. He's only got to lap him. The two cars aren't racing for position. But there is Zonta. Zonta with the red mirrors in the number two Mercedes. Remember this battle for championship points. Today's race is going to resolve the FIA GT Drivers' Championship. And Zonta is creeping ever closer to Schneider as Schneider is delayed laid by the third placed car which he's still trying to lap and we're with him again he's right on the tail oh and a twitch there from Muller and that's what Schneider needed Schneider gets past Muller at last because Muller made a tiny mistake the car almost got away from him and immediately Schneider was by here's a replay watch Schneider gesticulate angrily through his right hand window at the errant Porsche driver as he goes by now we've got Bouchou back in the pits they've given him a stop go penalty apparently for speeding in the pit lane and Schneider coming into the pits now you see him shrugging off his seat belt Schneider who's done a double stint is now coming in to hand over to his Australian co-driver Mark Webber Schneider in the leading Mercedes and he hasn't had a tyre change yet he hasn't had a driver change yet this is going to be a longer stop Zonta too is going to have to stop but Zonta won't need a change of drivers and perhaps won't need a change of tyres it's very finely poised this race Schneider the leader in the pits Zonta is going by into the lead but Zonta too is going to have to stop any moment now Mark Webber the Australian back into the car there is Zonta in the pits now Zonta is in how quick is this stop going to be 
they're not going to change the tyres, are they? They're certainly not going to change the driver. Zonta sitting in the cockpit waiting. One of the little 911s has gone off into the wall. And here is Zonta out squirrelling his way down the pit lane it's very slippery there there's a lot of oil on the pit exit but Zonta safely back onto the circuit as the Zack Speed Porsche goes by oh and Zonta getting out of shape Zonta's off Zonta off onto the gravel is he going to hit the wall he just manages to stop the car before he hits the wall he's fishtailing his way through the dust and the puddles we're seeing it again from the driver's viewpoint understeering widely then oversteering twitching onto the dirt and somehow he manages to nurse the car back onto the tarmac that could have been absolutely disastrous for Ricardo Zonta but he's back on the circuit and his stop as we expected has been so much quicker than Mark Webber's than the Schneider handing over to Webber stop as the caption shows, they are split by the Alton Buller Porsche, but that is due its own pit stop. So basically, the Mercedes are going to be first and second with about 16 or 17 seconds between them, I would think, at this point. So now the FIA GT Drivers' Championship comes down to this simple, straightforward battle between Ricardo Zonta, the Brazilian, and Mark Webber, the Australian. There's Norbert Howe watching the computer screens in the pits. We've got the Jörg Buller Uwe Alton. Porsche in for its second routine stop as we expected it was briefly in second place splitting the two Porsches it's now dropped down to third and there is the Paynos with David Brabham back aboard taking over from Eric Bernard and taking the Paynos back into the race still in fourth place but now all eyes are just on this Mercedes battle the caption tells the story 14.9 seconds between Zonta in the lead and Weber in second place and whichever of these two reaches the chequered flag first will earn the championship title for himself and for his partner. Zonta, the brilliant young Brazilian who'll be in Formula One next year as Jacques Villeneuve's partner in the new BAR Formula One team. The Zack Speed Porsche's in the pits. That's Michael Bartels aboard now. He's taken over from Max Angelelli and off the jacks the car goes and away back into the race goes Michael Bartels. And we ride now with the second-placed Mercedes-Benz. This is the Australian Mark Webber in second place, and he is absolutely flying. You'd expect Zonta to be the faster of these two, but in fact, Webber, helped by his fresh tyres, is closing the gap just a little bit, but it is closing between himself in second place and Ricardo Zonta in the lead. Now, Weber is coming up to lap Uwe Altsen in the same Porsche that delayed this car earlier when Schneider was at the wheel. Weber can't afford any delay if he's to catch Zonta. There's Norbert Haug shaking his head in disbelief as Weber comes up now to go through on the inside of Altsen and they touch! Altsen slammed the door in the Mercedes face, but the Mercedes kept on coming. We're seeing a replay. It's a big impact between those two cars, but fortunately, Weber is able to keep the car pointing in the right direction and go on his way there once more is our GT2 leader that's the Beretta Lamy car with Beretta back in the wheel after Pedro Lamy has done the middle stint and they're making GT2 look awfully easy well ahead of a phalanx of Porsches and the Marcos long since out of the race and there's our leader that's Ricardo Zonta looking very smooth very quick working his way neatly through the traffic but if he's quick this car with the inspired Australian at the wheel driving the race of his life that's Mark Webber he is creeping ever closer meanwhile there's our third placed Porsche Uwe Elts and he apparently undamaged by that slightly disgraceful incident between the two of them and now Zonta coming up to lap one of the blue V12 Mercedes which I'm sure won't give him any difficulty that's the car of Bouchou delayed of course by that additional stop go penalty for speeding in the pit lane when he took that car over and still Mark Webber headlights blazing pushing pushing all the time this race is by no means over this championship battle is by no means over 12.9 seconds now is the gap and still Webber is easing off half a second here quarter of a second there plunging down the corkscrew he goes working away at the wheel there's the Mustang shedding bits of bodywork in front of him, but uh, Weber is able to go by without incident. And if Weber looks ahead as he goes into that long downhill left-hander, he could just see the leader there. That indicates the gap as uh, the Paynos is lap 
and if you can see your quarry ahead of you, that is a wonderful incentive. Red mirrors means Ricardo Zonta, the number two car, which is in the lead. Oh, and off goes one of the V12s. That is Jean-Marc Gounon getting it all completely wrong, fishtailing back onto the circuit. I think something's broken on that car, and in fact, so does Jean-Marc Gounon because he steers straight down the pit lane. Watching the Mercedes personnel, Norbert Haug, wondering which of his two drivers, which of his four drivers, which pair is going to end up the champion. Zonta, second half of his double stint, headlights blazing as he works his way through these back markers. A back marker can spell disaster if he doesn't see you coming. And we wait to see the second place man. There he is, the yellow mirrors. That's Mark Webber in the number one car. In second place, the car he shares with Bert Schneider. Up the hill, up the gearbox. And that's Klaus Ludwig, who has finished his last piece of motor racing. He's retiring at the end of this race. He's done the first stint, and Klaus Ludwig is waiting to see whether he will end today and end his career as FIA GT champion as his co-driver, Ricardo Zonta, goes on his way in the lead. Well, Bernd Schneider is watching from the pits as well to see how Mark Webber's getting on. 9.2 seconds, the gap's now come down to. It's coming down, but I wonder if it's coming down enough because we're nearly getting to the end of this wonderful race at Laguna Seca. Down through the corkscrew goes Ricardo Zonta. And just up the hill into the corkscrew goes Mark Webber. There's Klaus Ludwig, who's started to smile now. David Brabham in the Paynors in fourth place has been caught by Uwe Altsen in the third place Porsche. In fact, Brabham's got his left winker on to allow Altsen neatly to overtake him. We see Zonta now. The gap is eight seconds. It's still coming down, but Ricardo Zonta is starting to look very secure in that lead. There's not very far to go before the chequered flag. There's not very far to go before the resolution of the 1998 FIA GT Championship, and Ludwig really is beginning to believe that perhaps he could end his season in this fairy tale way. Zonta coming over the start finish line now to start his final lap. Zonta crosses the start finish line, and still Mark Webber pursues him as hard as he knows how. But now we watch the number two Mercedes, the one with the red mirrors, the one that has had Ricardo Zonta at the wheel since 1.30. Bert Schneider there with Klaus Ludwig. Schneider clearly thinks it's all over. And Zonta now through the corkscrew for the final time on this wonderful twisting road circuit here at Laguna Seca. A few back markers ahead of him and half a lap to go before the chequered flag will greet him as champion. Zonta neatly into the left-hander coming round now towards the pit straight. And the chequered flag is waiting. He goes towards the pit lane. He's greeted by the Mercedes crew. And Zonta is champion. Ludwig is champion. The FIA 19. 98 title is resolved and there is Klaus Ludwig who gets the cheers in the pits. Zonta celebrates in the cockpit, it's all over and Beretta, the GT2 champion, has his own celebration with a magnificent donut to end the season. Here's confirmation of that win for Ludwig and Zonta. It was close though, Mark Webber just 10 seconds adrift at the flag. A fitting finale to the career of a distinguished sports car driver, Klaus Ludwig finishing his racing days as a world champion. And for teammate Ricardo Zonta, it's just the beginning. We'll see a lot more of him next year in Formula One.